All right, guys, I know that you're outdoor lovers. I know you probably love to camp, and I know you love to bring your animals. This week, we're gonna talk about all the things you should be thinking about if you wanna take your pets camping. I'm Dave Salmoni for Animal Planet, and these are your Animal Bites. The first thing I'm gonna tell you when you take your animals anywhere is you better make sure you know where the treats are. Something that makes it fun for the animal, makes it easy for the animal, uh, but it gives you some control. I am out here in the outdoors and there are tons of elements out here you should be thinking about that uh, aren't particularly normal to my dog because my dog is a city slicker. Right, Roddy Bear? Now the first thing you think about for your dog when you're camping are the same things you think about for yourself. Food is the number one thing. It's just like you, when you're going camping, you want to store your food properly, you need to keep your food dry, you need to hang your food from bears. Any of the environmental factors that you think about for your food, think about them for your dog. I like to have Tupperware because it doesn't get squished in the backpacks and those types of things. So keep it dry, keep it safe, keep the bugs, keep the critters away from it. Uh, that's because you got to feed your dog. Water, similar, whatever you're doing for yourself, make sure you do it for your dog. Shelter, same. I don't believe that you should have a dog that's just going to live outside your tent because if, particularly up here in Canada, you know, if a real cold storm comes across, you're going to really expose that dog to things that uh, it might not want to be exposed to, particularly if it's a city dog like Honey Bear. Honey Bear, quit attacking the buggies. <laughs> Which is another thing, my dog's now attacking the local wildlife. Right now it's just flies. Come here, honey, come here. But you got to think about all the animals that's in the environment. Come, honey. So some of the things we think about when we're out here are the things that might hurt her. So we're thinking about bears and wolves and moose and mountain lion. Uh, but then you also got to think about the animals that your pet might hurt. If you know for sure that your dog is going to chase a bunny rabbit if he sees it, bring a leash. You know, he doesn't have to be on the leash all the time. We have to know that we can control Honey Bear and you have to control your pet uh, in order so it's not impacting the environment. We're here to enjoy ourselves and, uh, but not to impact it. Another hot tip you have to think about when you're going outdoors with your animal is uh, call your vet. Call your vet with enough notice that they can tell you to plan for the appropriate vaccines and things like that. So if you know where you're going, you have to know, are there, is there rabies in the area? Is there distemper in the area? Do I need to think about heartworm? And all these types of things, your vet will help you plan if you tell them with enough notice. You can't call them three days before and say, hey, guess what? I'm going somewhere with this pet of mine because there won't be enough time to vaccinate. Another thing that I'd like to think about is, you know, the difference in activity with your animal. So maybe you want to bring a little extra food, a little extra water. Um, and in our case, sometimes it's even the extra activity that makes our dog sore. She's a big, big dog. She doesn't run 12 hours a day when she's in the city, but when she's out in the bush, she runs all day and she gets stiff and sore. So there, talk to your vet as to what you can give her for that soreness. We like to you know, increase our oil in the food and we also like to maybe give a little piece of aspirin if the hips start to get a little bit sore, but make sure you clear that with your vet. I have with mine. Now, I also think about things like this rock. This rock is all over the place up here and this is where she runs. Uh, the first couple of days up here, she tries to, we try to let her build her calluses up. We let her run for a little bit, make her sit and relax for a little bit. We make sure while she's having her little heat breaks, she's off her feet and not running on these rocks. If she does 12 hours of running on this rock, uh, she could pull the pads right off her feet and then she can't have any fun while we're camping. So just think about the terrain, think about how that's gonna affect your dog. Think about that type of thing. Now, a lot of people ask me, is it just dogs for camping? Absolutely not. If you want to take your cat camping, 100% you should do it. Uh, follow all the rules that I would tell you about for your dog, but maybe expose them. Uh, if you don't know how they're going to react to the outdoors, expose them little by little. Show them grass first, show them outdoors, fresh airs, and make sure you control your cat first. Like uh, harness is a great idea. Harness on a leash is a great idea. Uh, toys that you could use to uh, keep the cat's attention. All of these types of things uh, will make it a positive experience when they go outdoors so they start to realize, oh, outside's fun. I have a little more freedom. I get a little extra toys, a little extra treats. Um, and then once it's fun for that cat, you can kind of know how far you can push it with, with your particular cat. So another fun thing you can bring to control your cat but also bring them camping uh, is you have a harness, you have a leash, you have a carabiner, 
and it attaches to a rope. You then tie a rope to two trees, and that gives that cat a lot of freedom to roam, look, sniff, chase, you know, do all the things it wants to do. It gives you the satisfaction of it's still controlled in an area where it's not gonna run off and get lost anywhere. Obviously, a cat is a little bit smaller. You have a few more predators you have to worry about, the birds, the foxes, uh, coyotes, those types of things, but it uh, goes back to the rules of know your environment. Uh, but definitely, if you're a cat lover and you think your cat like it outside, bring it along. Another thing you want to think about when you're camping is waste disposal. Now, that could be the dog poop that I got to pick up and put it somewhere. Uh, you can't have a bunch of plastic bags thrown in the bush. So know what you're doing with your poo. Don't leave it around campsites. Uh, when you do your dishes, whether it's a dog's dishes or yours dishes, I always tell people clean them far enough away from camp that if you do attract some of those predators in, like a bear, um, they, they're attracted to where you did dishes far away from camp rather than you know, at nighttime when uh, you know, maybe your dog is sleeping by the fire and a bear comes by. Uh, you don't know what that interaction is going to end up like. So all of your waste, anything uh, that you might be leaving, uh, you know, make sure you're managing it in, in a way that uh, is respectful to the environment, but also safe. doesn't attract other animals to come into your site because typically speaking, it's the waste that brings in all these nuisance animals that cause problems and particularly big problems if you have a pet. My number one tip for camping anytime, even if you don't have your pets, is leave the place a little bit better than you found it. Um, so that includes your dogs. You know, you clean up your poop, uh, whatever your dog gets into, make sure it's nice and clean. Make, make sure you leave a little bit of firewood for the next person who's coming along. All right, guys, uh, thanks for joining. I hope you learned something. Uh, as always, uh, leave your comments below, the questions, the things I didn't think about. Maybe one of you have got a parrot you want to bring camping. I don't know. Leave your comments below. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, enjoy the bush.